Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with a German Christmas market in Dresden. DW documentary. I'm ready to dive right into it. Before we do, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. What do we got? It's just beautiful. Dresden Christmas Stollen. Great flair. Of course, it's super. Every winter, Dresden's Striezelmarkt has to defend its reputation as Germany's loveliest Christmas market. It's a Is this true? Is this Germany? Are they the loveliest Christmas market in Germany? Uh, I don't, I've seen a lot of comments that say there's so many great and amazing German Christmas markets. It's hard, right, to, 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 to rate them like top 10 or what's the best one, what's the most lovely one, because there's so many. Everybody's going to have different opinions, and that's very understandable. Has to defend its reputation as Germany's loveliest Christmas market. It's a tough job for those working here. And then there are concerns about security. But when all goes well, the Yuletide spirit here is perfect. Wow. My God, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. It's six in the morning, and baker René Krause is under pressure. Thanks. The fruit breads, known as Stollen, have to be ready in time for the Christmas market. Oh. His booth needs a fresh supply. They've been baking this typical Dresden Christmas specialty here since September. Christmas Stollen is the most popular. It's a traditional part of Christmas. We try out other kinds, such as cranberry or chocolate Stollen, but basically, the Christmas Stollen is our star in Dresden. Okay. René Krause is the third generation of his family to run the bakery. Look at all that food. He never wanted to do anything else. Really? It's hard to get three generations, right, to, to, to want to do that? Like, that's very intriguing because usually at some point when they're like, nah, nah, I'm not, I don't want to do it. At some point in the generational bloodline, it's like, nah, I, I don't want to take up that. But uh, look at all that amazing looking bread in there. Ever wanted to do oh. anything else. Oh, I just want to jump back there. Just want to jump back there. The Stollen for the Stritzelmarkt are being packed. The boss quickly checks the new dough. According to the statutes of the Dresden Stollen Protection Association, we have to put in at least 50% butter. Mm. Our recipe calls for 52%, and that doesn't include the butter that's spread on the Stollen later when we dust it with sugar. God, oh my God. It's a recipe for weight gain. The ingredients and their amounts have to be followed to the letter. Flour, butter, candied lemon peel, almonds, and lots of sultanas. Renee calls the Sultana the queen of raisins. I'm not a big raisin fan, but I've never tasted a Sultana. I did, if it tastes a little different than a raisin, I'd be intrigued. Queen of raisins. They were softened in rum yesterday. That's why they're so shiny, Ooh. as you can clearly see here. Some rum raisins. Now that might be different. As far as your figure is concerned, how can I put this? Stollen is best for your soul. <laughs> it's a seasonal indulgence. But you've seen what valuable ingredients go into it. And no indulgence is ever completely free of regrets. <laughs> he said, as far as your figure is concerned, how can I put this? It's best for your soul. 
<laughs> might not be good for your figure, but it's good for the soul. And sometimes you just can't worry about your figure when you eat, guys. Sometimes you gotta eat. You gotta feed your soul. You gotta put the just amazing tasting food in your body, no matter the health the regrets that you might have. Sometimes you gotta do it. Completely free of regrets. Dawn is broken and the first vendors are already at the market. Cornelia Liebig is always one of the first. A Dresden native, she's been at the Stritzelmarkt for 28 years. Oh, wow. She's decorated her mulled wine booth to look like an old distillery. For the weekend, she's ordered an extra 50 liters of mulled wine and reordered mango punch three times. Jesus. Max, who delivers the beverages, is from the surrounding region. They deliver quality, so why would I want to use anyone else? It's like the customers. Once they find a place they like, they come back. Facts. We've really been busy. You too? We start at 5.30. Can you bring me two more gas canisters for tomorrow as a reserve? The Christmas market opens in an hour. Cornelia has a place for everything in her booth. She also owns a small hotel in the area. Really? A cup of tea with their neighbor Ingrid is part of the routine. It gives them a moment to slow down and relax. That's nice. Both say the Christmas market is best when it's cold and dry, because then tourists flock here. But there are also more pickpockets. Really? We keep a lookout. We tell our customers to hold their bags in front of them with their hands on them and never leave anything open. Sometimes it is their own fault. <laughs> I see it a lot. Sometimes we, we, talk, we tell them, be cautious. I, I keep your hands in your pocket, keep your bags, keep everything. So can't nobody get in their pockets without feeling your hand. But sometimes they don't listen to us, so sometimes it's their fault that they getting pickpocketed. <laughs> They're inviting, they're inviting the pickpocketers to come pick their pockets. Uh, I love it. Keep it going. I love these ladies. Sometimes it is their own fault. I see it a lot here. Elderly women put down their purses. Wow. Or when I hand them their purchases, they hold the item in one hand and their purse in the other and start to walk away. I always say, put your purchase down. Pack your purse away first. Close your bag and then you can go. We try to keep an eye on them. Since the attack on a Berlin Christmas market... People out here pick, pickpocketing the elderly, bro. Just, some people just disrespectful. You pickpocketing the elderly? I don't like it. Since the attack like on a Berlin Christmas market two years ago, the police have really? other worries. The access roads are secured here. Ten officers man the Stritzelmarkt's mobile police station. Axel Striebel distributes the radio frequencies. He and fellow officer Susan Herwagen are on patrol together today. Both have been thinking about the latest terrorist attack in Strasbourg, as police wow. officers and as private citizens. You follow it because you never know how it might affect you, whether it's coming closer or whether what happened there was a one-off. I think that worries everyone, especially around Christmas. Around noon, the Stritzelmark starts to fill up. Their patrol has gone quietly. Striebel and Herwagen will later report that there were no unusual incidents. Usually they're called out when people drink too much or get rowdy. <laughs> I feel that. Do you that also great visit the market wine. when you're off duty? That amazing mulled wine, I'm sure it's a lot of people who get to get to drink a little extra. extra a little more than they should. Do you also visit the market when you're off duty? Unfortunately, no. I don't manage to come here in my free time. After patrolling the streets and marked all day, I don't much feel like coming back. We already know every fragrance from every single mulled wine booth. 
That makes sense. Locals come to the market after work. Cornelia Liebig says mulled wine has gone a bit out of fashion. Nowadays, really? more exotic drinks are popular. This is a hot Cuban. Lots of rum goes into it, but I can't reveal the rest. <laughs> Sounds lethal. No, it's delicious. Nothing we make is lethal. You get up in the morning and you never have a hangover from my cocktails. Ooh, hold on! I might need to go to visit her boo! Alcohol that, that you don't wake up with a hangover? That, that might be my kind of drink right there. Hey, give me some of them. And you never have a hangover from my cocktails. Okay. In the evening, the boss has four assistants. Her helpers speak several languages. That's awesome. English and Spanish. English and Spanish. Claudia speaks Italian and is studying water management. Anna works as a head of marketing and a sales manager. And she also helped design and market my booth. Oh, wow. Back in the bakery, René Krause has already taken out the new dough. No Stollen can weigh more than a kilo and a half. During Advent, everyone, including Schumai, an apprentice from Eritrea, helps out. Asked if they all like Stollen, the answer is a resounding yes. <laughs> and they say that includes Shumai. Don't you dare say anything different. <laughs> Every year they make 50,000 Christmas Stollen here in the bakery. God dang! After an hour That's in the oven, the Stollen. the Stollen are ready. Excellent. These Stollen are very good. Look at the texture. You can see really well how nicely they've risen. It does look good. During Advent, René gets hundreds of orders. His Dresden originals are delivered abroad as well. He says that these days, Dresden Stollen are a kind of ambassador for Saxony. Hmm. Today, René is going to the Stritzelmarkt himself. Well-known Stollen bakers like René sell their Christmas baked goods from their own booths. That's so dope. God, dang, look at all that bread. My God. That's crazy. Tourists and visitors to the city love this fruit bread, and sometimes that's why they come here. There's nothing better than buying Dresden Stollen at the market that's named for it. I swear to God, I, I really want to try this now. Like, I really want to try some Stollen. Get what it. Can you ship it to America? <laughs> better than buying Dresden Stollen at the market that's named for it. This customer comes here every year to buy René's Stollen. The baker promises to pass on the compliment to his assistants. I love that. They say that the Stritzelmarkt is living history. The tradition goes back nearly 600 years. The children's choir is just as much a part of it as the handmade stars and huge wooden pyramids. And ah, tourists get down, love get down. it. <laughs> the Edmonds have traveled here especially from Berlin. We've been to Berlin Christmas markets and they weren't so great, but we really love the Dresden market, the decorations on the little booths, the Christmas ornaments everywhere, and the friendly people here. I think most Chinese people know about Germany's Christmas markets. They're very famous. In half an hour, the market will close for the evening. At Cornelia's, there's a last round for the late birds. <laughs> we have beautiful markets in Vienna, but you have to see what markets are like elsewhere. And this booth is especially fine. I love that. Christmas Eve is the last day at the Stritzelmarkt for Cornelia Liebig and all the others.
We close at 2 p.m., then we have to clear up and take some things to the storehouse. And then at 5 o'clock, we lie on the couch, drink a glass of bubbly, eat some potato salad, and we usually just fall asleep because we're so exhausted. And that's what our Christmas is like. I love that, Next man. Christmas season, Cornelia Liebich will be here with her stand. She can't imagine Christmas without the Stritzelmarkt. This is so awesome. Big shout out to the Christmas market in Dresden. It looks absolutely amazing. It looks absolutely uh, loving. Uh, but that's all we got for this one. I still want to try some of that bread and some of that the cocktails that leave you hangoverless the next morning. Uh, but that's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. If you guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy Dina out.